Hey guys, for the longest time, I have been putting off creating merch because I could never settle on a set style or design. After some careful thought and consideration, I landed upon these yes. three designs to start with. I've got shirts in masculine, feminine, and youth cuts, and super cute Neat. tote bags for each design. I'm keen on adding more items in the near future, so keep your eyes peeled for any new additions. If you or your friends want to look creepy cool, cover your hair to shame, you filth human. Or you just want to help support the channel, then I highly recommend clicking the link in the description down below or heading over to www.crowdmade.com slash collections slash Emily Artful to pick up one of these cool designs today. Hello everyone, my name is Emily, and today I'm headed to Walmart to pick up some art supplies and show you guys that you don't need to spend a bunch of money to create fun art. I've always been deeply saddened when young or beginner artists are discouraged from starting their art career because they believe that they need to have moderate to expensive art supplies in order to succeed. I was in that same boat myself when I was young, and I felt like I wouldn't be successful because I didn't have fancy art supplies when a lot of my peers did. Sometimes I was even ridiculed for the quote-unquote cheap art supplies. I was using. I'm here to say, if anyone makes you feel inferior for the supplies you're using, they can suck a fat nut, because why does that even matter? Anyway, Walmart has some great inexpensive to moderate options from reputable brands across the board. You just need to know where to look and what you're looking for. Today, I'm going to be doing a $10 example and a $20 example to show you what I do with each. I also want to make something clear up front here. I understand that a handful of people watching this will be irritated that I'm even shopping at Walmart or giving them any sort of positive PR. And I do get it. It's a big corporation that can greatly damage local economies and drive smaller specialty shops to close. I think it's important I acknowledge that information up front in the event that anyone was in the dark about that fact. But I also want to remind the people who are privileged enough to be able to afford to shop at other oftentimes more expensive alternatives that not everyone can spend that kind of money to stick it to these big corporations. A lot of people have families to feed on a tight budget or they're a minor and they don't have any regular income of their own right now or live in a community that doesn't have any other options. This video is for them and I'd really appreciate it if we keep the quote unquote Walmart shaming to a minimum. Everyone deserves a chance to be creative, so let's see what we can find. Behold. I have to make a quick pit stop because I told Beanie I would pick him up a um, fake cash register with his um, Christmas money. We have a little fake instant bot. That is so cute. Um, but I'd assume, yeah, the cash register would be right here, but it's not. Ooh, this would be like the sneakiest way ever to get him to clean up. It's so soft. Feels like Osa. This is so soft, so soft. And I love the color. No. Mm, it's so good. They actually have a really good selection of things. They're just a little bit picked over. Wiggy does need new PJs. Oh my gosh, how cute. Maybe no hood. Oh, this one's very cute. I have to get this too. Oh, a little monster truck on it. So cute. Oh. Not what I came here for. I gotta get myself out of the baby section like now. Cute, cute. No, I was racking my brain trying to find out why there was no Crayola stuff here at Walmart when I realized it was all in front with like other stationary stuff because this, this is pretty much a staple for inexpensive art supplies. Now, I don't really like crazy art very much. If you can spend the extra money on the Crayola, even if it's something something a little bit smaller, I would do that because I know even with Crayola, Crayola can get pretty expensive, but they make 
really great products. Crazy Art, a little bit less so. If you can avoid, great. If not, that's fine. We'll make it work. So as cute, oh man, let me fix that. That's still bad. For as cute as I think this video is gonna turn out, I don't know if it was worth the um, awkward stares. And I know like people don't care, right? Like they simply don't care, but the, they're still gonna look. Who FaceTimes in landscape? Not a lot of people. Just kidding, I FaceTime in landscape now that I think about it. It was kind of awkward and I felt uncomfortable. And I'm sure if I did this more, it would be less and less uncomfortable each time I did it. The New Year's resolution I made for myself this year was like, just, it's okay to go out and be yourself and be silly, like be unabashedly, una, unabashedly, God help me. Unabashedly yourself, like just go out, be yourself and don't worry what other people think um, about you. And I failed that. I was just like, hi, help me. But it was fun. So let's go home and see what we can make with the art supplies we got. Shit, I keep forgetting that I have frozen food with me. Hurry up, bitch, shut up. For the $10 example, I initially went over by $2, but hang with me because I had a plan. I purchased a $5 Simply Brand sketchbook, a $4 Daler and Rowney sketch set, and a $3 24 count Crayola colored pencil set. My Walmart didn't carry the smaller 12 count Crayola colored pencil set. So I just went ahead and purchased the 24 count and for the sake of the challenge, I only used the colors that would be in the original 12 count set. However, that still put me over by $1 because the 12 count set, according to Walmart's website, would be $1.84, which because I rounded everything up to play it safe budget wise, would make them $2 making my total $11. Honestly, I think I would have been fine not including any color at all, just judging by my final art piece, which you'll see here in a minute, but I wanted to at least have three items in each example, so my bad. The $20 example gave me a lot more wiggle room to pick more diverse items, so my recommendation is if you can hold on to any extra cash until you've got about $20, you'll be able to have more room to experiment with different mediums. But don't forget, you could still do a lot with $10 if you repurpose and recycle. For this challenge specifically, I just bought things to make an art piece from start to finish, all bought at relatively low cost. I have a video coming up in the future all about repurposing discarded goods to make art. So don't forget to subscribe and turn your notifications on if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. The Daler and Rowney sketch set was great because it came with a kneaded eraser, three pencils, one woodless pencil, and two graphite sticks. I decided to draw my baby son, Wiggy. I have this great picture of him with this huge, like, baby classic smile. He's also wearing this, like, adorable little red jumper with bear ears. It's just an amazing photo of him. It totally captures his big, smiley personality, and I just desperately wanted to recreate it. I started with a basic, albeit very creepy, sketch and worked in layers from there, carefully noting the shadows in the original picture. In the end, there were a few differences, but overall, I was really happy with how it turned out, even though I placed it in kind of a peculiar place on the page. But now I think you guys can see what I meant about the piece not really needing color, but I do think it benefited from having that nice pop of red. I really only used red, blue, and black to create the shadows on the jumper. Otherwise, I didn't touch any of the other pencils. But don't worry, they will not go to waste when I am done with the pencils and pretty much everything else from this challenge, it will go into to our communal art supply cabinet that we have in our home. I have the art supplies that are just for me that I really don't want my kids messing with and I keep those things in my studio, but pretty much everything else is free for all to share. Um, we do a lot of sitting down and drawing with each other. So we have this big communal cabinet where everybody can just reach in and grab what they want. It's a free for all for the kids and they don't touch my shit, so everybody wins. <laughs> Don't touch my shit. Actually, Beanie is like super respectful of my stuff, probably because I'm super respectful of his stuff. Huh, just thought of that. All the products in the $10 category functioned very well. The Daler and Rowney pencils were smooth and easily blendable. They did erase well with my regular General's needed eraser, but the purple eraser the set came with wasn't that great. It was a little too hard, but it still did the job. I think a plain white eraser would work best, honestly. The paper in the sketchbook held up very well against that hard eraser and had a good, tight texture, complementing the great pencils. And of course, I will always praise Crayola colored pencils. They're very pigmented and blend well. They're a hard 
shorter type of pencil and obviously not quite as smooth as some of their more expensive counterparts, but I still really like them and think they're great quality for their affordable price. For the $20 example, I purchased a $7 Canson XL Mixed Media Sketchbook, $6 Tombow Fudenosuke Brush Pens, $3 Royal & Langnickel All Media Brushes, and $2 Crayola Watercolors. I actually came up $2 short on this challenge. I suck at this. So unfortunately, I didn't love the washable Crayola watercolors. I've said this before, I much prefer the also inexpensive Prang watercolors, which I've made a whole video about in the past. But I've also always said that the Crayola watercolors are usually a good alternative if you cannot find Prang, usually a good alternative, usually being the operative word there. I'm guessing the washable variant of these paints, of which I purchased, have some extra ingredient in them that causes them to be like super washable because technically all watercolors are quote unquote washable because they're water-based. The pigments can still stain, but you can remove the bulk of the paint with water alone. At least that's the case with most watercolors. I don't know what Crayola put in these washable watercolors to make them super washable, but they were um, greasy is the word I want to use. Working in lighter layers helped a little, but not by much. When I tried to layer them in this little test painting, they just merged with the layer below. They also took a pretty long time to dry. The paper isn't that absorbent, so I'm sure some of the longer drying time is due to the paper, but just judging by the strange sheen left by the paints, I'm leaning toward the paints themselves and the ingredients in them that were really affecting the drying time. That being said, they were still usable and I was still able to achieve the look I wanted in my final piece, but that was only because it was relatively simple and the only technique I needed to use was wet on wet blending. If this piece would have required more layering, I'm pretty sure it would have failed. These paints do not perform like standard watercolor should, so I don't recommend using them if you wanna get into the medium. However, a few years ago, I did use Crayola watercolors that didn't have the washable label on them, and they worked very similarly to the Prang watercolors. Perhaps the non-washable paints have a better consistency, or perhaps Crayola has since changed their formula. If you have any idea, let me know in the comments down below. I'd really appreciate it, and I'd credit you for any information you can share. The Tombow brush markers were great, albeit a bit stiff for my tastes, but they have a plastic nib, so that's to be expected. The Canon XL mixed media paper was perfectly fine for light mixed media sketching. It held up to light layered washes of watercolor. Didn't pill, took the pen perfectly fine, all good things for a sketchbook. The paper did want to warp slightly, and I would imagine with any more water, it would warp quite a bit, but it didn't wear through. Standard, very good for the price. But the real winners here were the brushes. They held their shape, had a great snap, and held a decent amount of pigment and water. I usually recommend to purchase brushes that are specifically meant for watercolor if you're going to be using them for watercolor. They're made to hold a lot of water and pigment, and Typically, acrylic, oil, or all media brushes don't do that in a way that would be proficient for watercolor use. But I also recommend to use whatever works for you. And these brushes worked great for their price, especially the size one brush. I will absolutely be using these brushes again. Now, to be fair, time will only tell if these brushes will hold their shape. But even if I only get a few months of use out of them, they're still totally worth the price. And here are the two final pieces. Simple, but lots of fun to make. You can find great art supplies anywhere for perfectly reasonable prices. I can't wait to test out more in the future. Where should I go next? Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys later.